Uh, welcome to another edition of Talking Sports and Fitness with Zeke. I'm Zeke, sometimes known as Mike Zielinski. I'm honored today to have as my guest Mike Spadali, who is the general manager and co-owner of Rip It, a batting cage and baseball training facility in Burn Township. And But first of all, congratulations, Mike. Uh, you, you were inducted into the Baseball Town Hall of Fame this summer uh, out at the First Energy Stadium. You're the all-time hits leader for the Reading franchise and games played. Thank you, Zeke. Yeah, definitely uh, an honor to be to be uh, inducted into the Reading Phillies Fightin's Hall of Fame. Um, my time and years spent here were were absolutely amazing, and uh, you know, having been a player for 13 years in the minor leagues and traveled around to a lot of different cities in the country, I can honestly say, Reading is the number one minor league place in the country. Yeah, uh, your love of baseball. Uh, probably translates into what you do now, because that is a long time to be in the minor leagues. So you must really have, you're kind of like a modern day Crash Davis. Of <laughs> yeah, I think that's safe to say, Zeke. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but but I think you're right. You know, baseball is has always been in my blood. And, um, you know, I had a, a, a nice career. And now being retired, um, I still love the game. And I want to give back to the game. And I want to give back to the kids. and to play baseball. Now, the first thing you did when you retired to give back to the kids, you started uh, the Brooks County Bulls, Correct. which is, an, you have several teams un, under 12 to under 16 level. Correct, Zeke. I started with one team um, at the 13U level and um, gradually expanded into uh, six teams now. And, and they're all local Berks County kids. They all go to different schools. Um, we, we do a little traveling, mostly we play in the area. and. Uh, uh, we, we have fun and it's going well. Now for years uh, there was the hitting facility in Burn Township, Grand Slam USA. And you guys took it over and what an impressive ownership group. You have Scott Hunsinger who is the general manager of the Fightin' Phils. You have uh, uh, Chuck Domino who used to be the general manager and now has his own enterprises. Yes. And uh, you're one of the co-owners and I think Eric Valent who is my Correct. neighbor and a former big league ball player. Correct. Uh, who, who also played for Reading at one time. Yes. So you certainly got to work with all. Tell us what you did with the place this summer. Yeah what we did Zeke was we uh, renovated the the entire facility. Um, new floors, new ceilings, um, of course, a new paint job, new lights. Um, the big thing that we changed uh, there was we added a large uh, turf area where your kids are able to hit or pitch or throw uh, and, and work out that, that way, similar to how the pros work out now in the off season. Yeah, instead of just hitting, you have that component, fielding, throwing, hitting, and pitching. Uh, the pitching coach with the Reading Fightins, Steve Schrenk, is with you, and he has his own, what, he's CEO of Pitching Coach Pro, so he specializes. Yes, you know, we're, we're ecstatic to have Steve uh, in the building, and, and he's always been a really good friend of mine. He was actually um, a coach, was the pitching coach here in Reading when I played here for a couple seasons, and um, him and his family are staying here in the off season now, and uh, he's doing work at the facility as well. He's, he's teaching pitching, and to have a, uh, a guy like like Shranky, that's what we call him in uh, <laughs> in in the pro game. To have a guy like Shranky uh, in the building teaching teaching pitching, he pitched in the major leagues. Um, the kids aren't going to get a better teacher than that, and he's also really good with the kids, and the kids enjoy working with him. The uh, uh you opened in October, right? We did, correct. And, and you had, I know you had some of the ball players up from uh, Philadelphia and stuff like that. It was uh, went really well. How's business been since you you opened? Now? It's it's been it's been very good. You know, this is a it, it's a down time of year with baseball, having baseball just ended for kids and and older players. But uh, you still get a lot of, of uh, kids come in there and hitting the cages and want to take some swings. And what we foresee happening is is after the new year. Um, the months of January, February, March, April are really big because the players are getting back into it and it's right. almost spring training per se and uh, we anticipate being very busy then. I love your name by the way, Rip It. Was that your? You know what, I can't take credit for it, Zeke. <laughs> I wish I could, but I can't. Um, Scott Hunsinger actually came up with that name. We were toying around with a few different names and um, uh, one day he, he threw the name Rip It Out and right away I knew that that was it. You know, I loved it from, from the get-go and yeah. uh, uh, it's a good baseball term and it's catchy. 
Oh yeah, there's no question about it. The, what's nice about your facility too is that uh, kids who play more than just baseball, they can still, in the off season, make the time to come and hit at your place or pitch or whatever. Absolutely, Zeke. Um, when I was a kid, I was a multi-sport player. I, I think as back well. then we all were. Yeah, but we it's, all it's were. changed to a degree. It yeah. has. It, yeah. it has become a little more. There's no off season for all sports. You know? Correct. Correct. Yeah. But but like you said, it it. It uh, is available for those kids that play basketball or play football in, in the non-baseball season to come in and, um, and get some swings or continue to throw to keep your arm moving and take ground balls as well. And I have a lot of kids I work with that play different sports and we just work around that other sport. You know, one thing I, you know, playing sports for kids uh, is really, and it teaches them a lot of lessons beyond sports, as you know teamwork, hard work, et cetera. But self-esteem is kind of factored pretty much into youth sports. And what a facility like yours does, it can help someone, you know, and they may not be a superstar naturally, but can take them to another level so they feel better about themselves and their game improves. Yes, I agree 100%, Zeke. You know, athletics in general, um, but especially the game of baseball, because there's a lot of failure in baseball. No question. Yeah. Um, provide. Uh, those kids with with the things that you were just speaking of work ethic um, you know leadership playing on a team dealing dealing with other people uh, handling failure uh, and handling success as well and uh, um, I think whatever those children decide to do later in life having played a sport and competed um, will make them better at what they end up doing uh, if if a parent wants to have one of their children or, or whatever check you guys out, uh, you, you have a website to go yes, to? Yes, we do, Zeke. Our website is ripit.org. Um, and it, it. Has, <laughs> it has all the information and, and everything that we provide as far as lessons and clinics and open open house days and different things like that. And, and you're open, what, uh, Mondays through Fridays from 4 to 9? and Correct. And 11 to 8 and Sundays 12 to 6. Yes, we're seven days a week. Yep, four to four to nine during the week. Weekends are, are 11 to 8 and, and 12 to 6 on Sundays. You work a lot of nights and weekends then. I do, Zeke, I do. But you it's know. not work for you. It's a passion? You know what? I, I wouldn't call it work either. Yeah. You know, it's like I said before. That's the nice baseball. thing about sports. Some guys never work, you know? Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, I haven't worked a day in my life, Zeke. I've know? had <laughs> I, I've had guys on the high school and college basketball coaches, Rick Ferry and, and one of the other high school school coaches who are who are accountants and they worked yes. professionally for a year or two and said this is boring and he right. went back into coaching yeah and uh, and they said they feel like they don't work it now uh, baseball I mean so analytical driven I mean Gabe Catler yes. uh, Philadelphia just hired I remember I've always admired him as a player I didn't realize he was an analytical guy I just know he was a fitness nut who struggled but he was a great character guy but analytics is overtaking the game, uh, and uh, there's obviously a lot of value into it. But now when you're watching TV, uh, especially this last World Series, which might have been the best World Series I've ever seen, yes. uh, launch angles, uh, exit velocities. But at the level you teach young kids, what kind of swing? You're not teaching them to uppercut everything. No, no, uh, I'm firm, not. Firm swing, level swing? Or, yeah, this, yeah, you know, I think... Uh, First of all, you know, when you're teaching hitting um, to a kid at any age is, is you have to keep it simple. Um, it's a hard thing to do. And um, I think now, uh, you know, with all these analytical numbers that you see and when you yeah. watch a game on TV, you hear, um, I, I think it can be too much for, for the kids to think about. And in the process of that, maybe overcomplicate it a little bit and, and you make it difficult. Yeah. Um, I think that there is a place definitely for all these numbers in baseball and and um, they're good, but only to a certain extent. You know, I think that that a manager or a coach, uh, that gut feel that they have yeah. um, is still still has to be in play rather than than everything, you know, by by the book numbers wise. Because yeah, you have Steve on Shrinky, as you call him, uh, on your staff, and obviously you coach the Bulls. Uh, how many breaking balls do young pitchers throw? And that's question A. Mm -hmm. And if they are, question B is, is that the diff most difficult thing to teach a young kid to hit a breaking ball? That's a good question, Zeke. Um, well, first of all, do, you, do, you, do they see many breaking balls? Yes, you do. Um, you 
from what I see is is probably the age of 12 you you see the boys starting to throw a curveball yeah um now what I think is that it 12 year, years old is, is an age where you can teach a pitcher to throw a curveball um, I don't think it's gonna hurt their arm but it's all about limiting their their pitches you yeah. know and it's not necessarily and limiting having to teach their them curveball. how to do it and, and their delivery has to be and you definitely mechanically want, yes uh, efficient Yes. Yeah. You know, the, the human arm is not meant to throw a baseball, yeah. uh, whether it be a softball, curve ball. Maybe you can throw softball forever, but, well, you know, exactly. not a hard because your yeah. shoulder, you know, yeah. your elbow. You know. the, the human arm hangs down, yeah. and that's why you see softball pitchers can pitch every day. Yeah. Um, the human arm doesn't hang in, in that, you know, up. So um, there is some, some torque just in general throwing a ball, whether it be a curveball, yeah. a fastball, there's, there's some torque on the, on the shoulder and there's some, some torque on the elbow. And proper mechanics, if taught at a young age, can definitely um, you know, save the arm as they continue to get older. Uh, we only have like a minute left or so, but a quick tip for a young kid who's having trouble hitting a curveball. You, you, you have to stay back and you have to think about hitting the ball the other way. You know, that's, yeah. that, that's a big one that I find myself teaching to, to the hitters that I work with is I think early on you have to teach a young hitter to want to use the whole field. Um, if, if there's a kid that is, is a pull hitter only, I think that he might have some trouble when he gets older because he's easier to yeah. pitch to. I mean, a kid at that age probably shouldn't be a pull hitter, or, or is it just natural for some kids? Yeah, you, it's natural. Yeah. Um, and by no means am I saying, you know, you shouldn't pull the ball yeah. um, because you, you have to know how to pull the ball. Yeah. But having me a, a bit... Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, me, exclusively, you yeah. know. Yeah. What I know is when they get older, then you throw them a curveball or you throw them a fastball outside and they're out. Yeah, if, if, yeah. You can't, if you can't hit the ball, um, yeah. you know, in the middle of the field or use the yeah. whole field. Yeah. Yes, it's very important in hitting. Well, even in the major leagues, it, it's amazing with shifts sometimes, you know. Yes. There's no one on one side of the field and you think, yes. just once, man, you could get a triple. You know? Yeah, you know? no, you're right. The game has changed in yeah. the last few years with the shifts. And yeah. like we spoke earlier, the, the numbers and analytics of the game. And, and like I said, I think there's a, there's a, a time and place for all of it. But that gut feel and that old school, that quote unquote old school yeah. um, areas of baseball, I, I personally think shouldn't be overlooked. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're not, and that's a good beginning. Uh, best of luck with Rip It. Uh, Mike Spadali, uh, Baseball Town Hall of Famer and giving back to the youth of Berks County. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Zeke. All right, for now, take care. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to the People Chronicles channel on YouTube. Take care. These stories are made possible in part by Spring Ridge Financial, Heidelberg Restaurant, Queen City Restaurant, Breath Home, and P.J. Willihan's. Mm -hmm.